Be not conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. For those of you who, whose language is primarily Spanish, if you would raise your hand now for a headset, we have simultaneous translation. For Sil. Any more takers? <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> and you know, that's how all of us respond. To our desire to want God in our lives. If we really are in touch with what's going on with us, each of us cries out for help. Each of us cries out for the love that we lost as a result of the fall. That separation, that which separated us one from another, that which separated us from God. And that which draws us back together again is the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen? Amen. Last week, we concluded that the natural progression from giving over our lives as a living sacrifice, our bodies as a living sacrifice, to God, holy and acceptable to him, and to not live as the world would have us live, to conform to that pattern, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds, so that the love of Christ is there filling us through his Holy Spirit, and that with with the presence of God in our lives, we're given spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts that are for our use to his kingdom. And they're to be used in the context of who God is. Love. To be used in the context of love. And in so doing there is something that is produced and it is called the fruit of the Spirit. And we talked about last week that fruit is the product of something so that it may be reproduced. Right? And also, as the product, as the fruit is reproduced or as the fruit is produced for its own reproduction, we also will enjoy it. Do you enjoy fruit? Okay, yes, amen. <laughs> so it is for our enjoyment, but it is primarily for reproducing itself so that the source of the fruit may continue. The source of the fruit of the Spirit is who? God, Jesus Christ, his, his spirit, which is love. So, this week, we're going to talk about the first fruits of the spirit. In Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23, we read, But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, peace patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So be prepared. This week, it is love, joy, and peace. Now, love... Anybody here ever been in love? 
Oh, yes, once or twice. Okay. Love is not a feeling. Let me repeat that. Love is not a feeling. Love is a verb. Now, grammar majors here, remember that a verb is action, right? A verb is something that acts. So love is an action. Love is emotion. Not emotion, but a motion. Love is an action. Those things that um, sometimes we feel love or we feel something, an emotion, as a result of an action that we may take. But the emotion that we feel is not love itself. So often, particularly in, in uh, new love, young love, first love, those wonderful, wonderful emotions that we feel are so self-centered. I love you for how you make me feel. I just love you because I can't believe you love me. Right? As we've heard someone say before, it's wonderful in those new relationships when we say to the other, come and let's join together as one and I'm the one. That's not the love that we're talking about. That's fondness. That's affection. That's an emotion. Love is a very serious action. And in scripture, it's called agape. The love that is from God. The kind of love that is so focused on the other that it is not self-centered at all. Anybody here, Italian, Irish, Jewish, you've had the mother who said, I sacrificed my life. I slaved. And I can't even get a phone call. That's not love. Sorry, mom. That's not love. That's a s desire to have an affirmation for self, but that's not love. Love is self-sacrificing. Love thinks more of the other than of self. Ray once in, in a sermon that, that he preached told a story about this, this um, Indian woman, this family in India, and the f this fellow that was betrothed to this woman that he loved so much. He loved her so much that he would do anything for her. And she did not like the mother because the mother was in the way. So he said to her, let me know what is your heart's desire. What do you really want from me? And I will do it. Anything you say. And the woman said, I want you to bring me your mother's heart. So the man went and murdered his mother. And he, was, he had his mother's heart. And he was going to his betrothed. And he tripped and he fell. And there rolled his mother's heart. And he went and he scooped up his mother's heart. And he heard his mother say, Son, are you okay? That is love. You with me? That is love. And that's the love that is the fruit of the Spirit. It is not the love that is self-seeking. It is not the love that says, I love you, you love me back. 
It is not the love that says, now I did this for you, I have sacrificed for you, now you give me recognition. It is the love that says, I look out for your best interest. I put you above myself. Love gives without expectation of return. John 3.16, want to quote it with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, what selfish thing is there about what God did? Nothing. It's all about us. He loved, so he gave. He gave his only son, so that we might have life eternal. When we say here, I love you. Anybody here say that? You know, in passing, I love you. You know, or I, I even sign my emails, love you. You know what that means? It doesn't mean some fuzzy little feeling. It means I care about your best interest. And when someone tells you they love you, that's what you can expect if it is done in the Spirit of the Lord. For that is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Now, love may not be an emotion, but feelings often come from love. Anybody here experience joy in your life? Okay. Yes. Joy, happiness. Happiness, joy. Feeling affirmed. Feeling significant. Brings joy, doesn't it? Jesus in, in the Gospel of John talks about the woman who is giving birth, there is such tremendous pain in the, in the birthing process. But at the end, when all is done, when the pain is over, there is great joy. For there is new birth. There is new life. That is joy. That is joy. In Romans 8... We read, as Paul says to the Romans, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Does that bring joy? Yes. Unspeakable joy indescribable joy knowing that there is nothing 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 you did last night nothing that happened this morning nothing that you're going to do today that can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus amen that means that even in the midst of pain even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of suffering, there can be and there is joy. That is the fruit of his spirit. That is the fruit of his spirit in our lives. Loving God and putting self-interest aside and loving another by putting their best interest first. And folks, love is not involuntary. It's intentional. It's intentional. You know, we say, ah, I just fell in love. As though, you know, there was a trap door and I just stepped in it. <laughs> That's extreme like. And that's a great deal of affection. And all of us appreciate it, and we get joy from that, don't we? 
However, that's not love because that's not intentional. The love comes when you wish you'd never fallen in that trap door. <laughs> and you've realized that at the bottom of that pit is a person that you never knew before. Because all of the good feelings about me have worn off. And now we have to face one another. That's when love really blossoms. That's when you act in the best interest of the other. That is when I act in your best interest. That is when I put myself aside and say, your interest and what's important to you is more important than I. That's why God tells us in Scripture to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, so that we may know his will. And his will is to love him. And how do we love him? Loving each other intentionally. Intentionally. An act of love is an act of intention. Now, what about the third one, the third fruit of the Spirit? Peace. Peace. Anybody here want peace in the world? Remember the 60s peace, man? <laughs> peace for everyone. This is not the kind of peace that he's talking about. Yes, we want peace that is the absence of conflict. We learned this weekend that conflict is an opportunity for us to find greater love between ourselves and the other. So peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Peace is when we are feeling and understanding that all is well. Peace comes when we're living a congruent life. You know what that means? We're living a life where we're walking the talk. Where my actions are fitting my words. When I say I love you and I treat you like dirt, that is not peaceful. I cannot live a peaceful life, nor can you. If I say that I love you, or I'm going to do this or that or the other, and I don't, I'm not living in peace. I'm not at peace with myself. The peace that we have that God has already paid the price. The peace that we have that we don't have to do anything else to measure up anymore. That it's already been done for us. That everything that we want to accomplish in our lives to be eternally secure and safe in the arms of our Creator has already been done for us. I can now live in peace knowing that. And it gives me great joy. And I am free then to love intentionally love as God has loved me. In John 14, verse 27, we read, Peace from Jesus, these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The peace that passes all understanding. In the 1870s, there was a, a businessman from Chicago named Horatio Spafford. In 1871, there was a, the Great Fire of Chicago. He was a wealthy businessman, Spafford. And he had two daughters and a wife. And in that fire, he lost all of his wealth, virtually. His business 
And his wife and daughters were traveling in a ship across the Atlantic to England or to Europe. And there was a collision with another ship. His wife survived, but his daughters did not. And she sent a famous telegram to him, I alone survived. Spafford, a few weeks later, was on a ship crossing at approximately the same place. And through the Spirit of the Lord, he wrote these words, When peace like a river attendeth my soul, my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. That's peace. That's knowing that we and those we love are forever in the care of a loving God who wishes to multiply that love through those who are the object of his love, you and I. Dwelling of his Holy Spirit, the dwelling of his Holy Spirit produces fruit. Love, joy, peace. The greatest of these is love. What are you doing with the fruit? Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your peace that passes any kind of understanding we might conjure up. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the joy that we have in our salvation. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge that you have said. If we pray anything in the name of your Son, you will provide it for us and that our joy would be complete. And when we pray, Lord, we know we pray in your name, in the name of Jesus. We're praying in the character of your Son. Lord, we pray now for an overabundance of your fruit in this body. May it be multiplied to overflowing the love, the joy, and the peace that comes from your presence here. Not for our glory, not for our purpose, but for you and your kingdom. Lord, for all of those in this community who are suffering now in fear, whether it be financial fear, whether it be fear of, not, of being alone, whether it be fear of being rejected, whether it be a sense of having been left behind. May the fruit that is produced here in your body overflow into this community and bring others, Heavenly Father, here as a place of refuge, a place of love, a place of acceptance, a place that validates. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and your grace Endure forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.